With SharePoint Server 2016 now generally available, today I'll walk you through the significance of this latest release. From infrastructure changes which lay the groundwork for us to deliver capabilities born in the cloud to SharePoint Server for more rapid innovation, how we're streamlining the deployment process based on our learning from running SharePoint in the Microsoft Cloud, and finally, performance improvements and some of the new and distinct capabilities that we're bringing to your data center. SharePoint Server 2016 is an infrastructure investment. The beauty's on the inside. We've built a foundation to deliver innovation back to SharePoint on-premises at a much more rapid pace so that you have immediate time to value. There's a couple of things that play into this. The first is a converged code base based on SharePoint Online. We used to have a branch of code for SharePoint Online and on-premises, and both had different trajectories. We now have one unified code base, which means we're not doing the same thing twice in different ways. We can now deliver capabilities in the same way as we do for Office 365. For example, if we take a look at what many of the capabilities that you see in SharePoint Server 2016, most of those were born and tested in SharePoint Online first. We cherry pick the things out that make sense in the cloud to deliver to you on-premises. And where these capabilities cannot be delivered on-premises, we're also delivering hybrid capabilities, such as hybrid search. And we're investing in distinct on-premises capabilities, such as the central administration audit log. To deliver new innovation, we've made changes at an infrastructure level for updates and security software, and bug fix type patching. If we take an example of trains, in the past, the engineering train might run for three to four years, stopping only to deliver a bunch of updates all at once. So as we can see here, we're stopping at SharePoint 2010 and 2013 as examples. Now the engineering train keeps on running and delivers innovation to the cloud and we're considerate around which of these innovations can be delivered to on-premises at a pace that you can be comfortable with on your own terms. We have evolved how we deliver updates. We refer to these updates as the feature pack model that gives you cumulative updates to deliver you a more rapid cadence of the innovation. This model is optimized for you to light up the features on your timeline and turn new features on and off. Our learnings from the cloud allow us the ability to bring value faster. The other thing we've solved through this release has been how to deliver updates without taking your servers offline, a capability that we had to hone when operating in the cloud. Zero downtime patching is a great capability we were able to accrue from Office 365 operations. We've been able to consolidate patches into a single MSI and single MSP, thereby reducing the footprint that patches require for SharePoint Server on-premises. By consolidating these patches, we've also enabled them to run their upgraders online. So now you incur no downtime while you're patching your SharePoint environment. Beyond keeping servers online for updates, there were other key learnings from running the Microsoft Cloud that we've baked into SharePoint Server 2016. We learned where we needed to streamline deployments so that we could standardize how servers were built and provisioned for scale. A foundational change is the standard topology via MinRoll that allows for better consistency when we service SharePoint. Let's have a look at the MinRoll experience. Here's an example of a traditional SharePoint server farm environment. As you can see, we have a number of servers available to us in our server farm topology. They're described by their roles. That's the third column in this chart. As you can see, we have a front end, an application server, a distributed cache server, a search server, as well as an external server. Each one of these servers is in compliance with the MinRoll topology, meaning they're all running their own designated services. We can also drill deeper into each server as well and we can look at the compliance of each of these servers in more detail. In the event a server ever falls out of compliance, we can quickly resolve that through the MinRoll options. MinRoll also allows us to convert server roles. So if we do have a server role that we'd like to convert, we can quickly go in and take a front end and turn that front end into a separate role, such as distributed cache, application, search, or custom. MinRoll doesn't mean you can no longer innovate on your front end. However, if you want the benefits of MinRoll, you would have to limit it to the services that we automatically provision for your MinRoll topology, or use a custom role. 
We've also heard from our smaller customers that Minroll requires a larger footprint than they're accustomed to. So we have future plans to deliver a new Minroll topology that enables SharePoint Server 2016 for smaller server farm environments. Standardizing on a topology also helps greatly with performance, resilience, and improving uptime. Beyond that though, we've also expanded what's possible. For example, a two-fold increase in search, up to 500 million items per search server application, and a two-fold increase in list view thresholds. In addition, we're also providing a five-fold increase in site collections and sites, as well as content databases, which used to be measured in the gigabytes and now are measured in the terabytes. In addition, we've increased our maximum file size limit to 10 gigabytes per file. These performance enhancements and extended boundaries are designed for SharePoint in your data center. In addition to some of the great infrastructure investments that we were able to accrue back to SharePoint Server 2016 from our experience running SharePoint at scale in Office 365, we've also been able to bring from the cloud a great set of user investments directly from SharePoint Online to on-premises via SharePoint Server 2016. For example, we have new simple controls that ride above each document library. They allow you to quickly access operations related to document management within the context of a document library. For example, I can quickly share a document, or I can create new folders and new documents without ever having to navigate to the context of the ribbon. The sharing experience has also been made more simple. So I can quickly come in, type a name, have that name resolve, and then share that document with Garth, for example, very rapidly. In addition to these investments, we've also invested in people-centric compliance. In doing so, we have new DLP experiences that you may be familiar with if you've used the Outlook client, such as policy tips. So as you can see here in clinical trials, patient information, rather than an icon that represents the file type, we have an icon indicating that access to the item is blocked, that it conflicts with the policy within my organization. As a user, I can click on that to learn more. So in this particular case, the item contains sensitive information which violates a policy that's been configured by my administrator. In addition to these investments, we're also bringing great capabilities that combine the power of both SharePoint Server 2016 and Exchange Server 2016 in the form of modern attachments, which allow you to simply share files through the Outlook client and have those files natively be stored in OneDrive for Business, on-premises, or in Office 365. So as you've seen, SharePoint Server 2016 was largely an infrastructure release, providing a foundation for the future. SharePoint Server 2016 was born in the cloud and is future-proof. And through our new feature pack model, we'll be delivering new simple collaborative experiences, increased administrative controls, in addition to some great new developer capabilities. We recommend you download SharePoint Server 2016 today, and thank you for watching.